So do you have on-site um, housekeepers or maid or yeah, how that live here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, some, they come and go. They come and go? Okay. They come here two, two days every week. Okay. Yeah. So they, they don't live on-site? You don't allow them to sleep inside the house with you, do they? They sleep in the house. I have two bedrooms here. Oh, okay. Have, you, yeah, you have a, a little house for them to sleep, but they yeah, have no right entrance in that. The garage, yeah. yeah. Uh, when I first approached him about buying land in Ghana, um, Premper didn't think I was serious. Yeah. Right? So it took me going to Sunyane to get a scam with some of somebody's wow. land. Yeah. yeah. Until yeah. Premper. That's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And then Premper helped me. Yeah. You know, because remember uh, when my father passed away yeah. and I was going back to, to, uh, to, to the USA, I stayed over here. Yeah. And I was like, man. Hollis, he's, he's able to come over here and make a success like that. Yeah. Um, I need to like follow that step. And then I saw him on that YouTube. He's got a, a brilliant YouTube channel. Okay. He's talking about African Americans relocating, like yeah. I said. Yeah. And uh, so when I came back, the next time I asked Premper to buy me a piece of land. Yeah. And um, so I did that. It's now good. I'm it's building. Good. It's yeah. Good. The, almost the, the possibilities are endless. Yeah. But what, what you need to understand is that you need to you need to bring something to the table. Right. You can't you can't just walk in and think that you know everything is going to be hunky dory. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like 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 I said earlier, just yeah. a lot of my yeah. so friends would have just exist. You want to do investment just like he's doing. You know the beaches are there. You know the, the, the navigating the land issue is often difficult. You know, but then there's always the proper way of doing it. The proper channels to do it. And once you do that, I think you, you'll be fine. Okay? So, my my advice is that the world of Ghana is open. It's open to everybody who wants to invest in it. Or you come in and then you look at where we fall short. Things that can be improved upon. And then you take advantage of that. Okay? So, once you are able to do that, you know, there are a lot of people, myself included, you know, sometimes you have an idea, and then you decide, say, you want to go to Ghana, you want to bring it to Ghana, and then you come in, then you need to adjust the idea, or sometimes you need to abandon it totally, because then you, 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 you find another uh, opportunity that you want to hop on, okay? That is even better than uh, what you brought in earlier on. So the idea is to come in and look. So often, I, I know some, some Ghanaians come in, they start business, and then it gets to be difficult, and then they decide you know, they want to go back to the States. Okay, it doesn't work. It will never work, because the, the, the longer you stay, and you go through the, the rough edges of staying in Ghana, uh, the longer the opportunities also will come. Yeah, there are all kinds of people who, one way or the other, you know, some of them are good and some of them are bad, just like everywhere else. But you need to find people, you need, you need to actually find people who can help you along the journey. Yeah, it's, it's not something that you, you can navigate yourself, you know. So when I got to the States, everything was laid out. I have my social security, just go look for work. And that's it, okay. Here, it's a bit different. You sometimes, you need, you need to bring a, a multinational, say somebody sent you in like a manager of uh, Google Ghana or Amazon Ghana, and then you come in is, is Amazon up here? Yeah, Amazon is here, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. You know, so, you know, those types of uh, multinational, if somebody is sponsoring you, and you come in and open an office here, that's also different, because usually what happens is that you have a template right. that you can follow. And the, the company is, is patented, so you can't take anything away from that company. And then you represent them, okay? That's another way. And then on the other way, so I, I was telling you that you need to come in and study. You need to come in and study where, where we're lacking. Right. The things that you can bring to the table, okay? Uh, for instance, I see that you have a camera, you have a nice big camera. Yes. You probably are good in something like that. Uh, th this is this is more. It's, 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 a, it's a, what you call it, a hobby. Yeah, exactly, it's more of a hobby. But I just, oh, so you, I like you nice make, camera. You don't make money out of it. Uh, on YouTube, you know, they have the uh, ad revenue you can get, but uh, you know, this is not making me rich, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I worked in corporate America. I, I, I have a friend. I have a friend uh, who 
was a dentist. Uh-huh. Uh, his passion is photography. Right. You know, and that was his passion before he became a dentist. But he wasn't making enough money with, with, the, with the dentistry. Okay, so he opened up a place, mm-hmm. hired some other doctors. So when he goes out to do his photography, which wasn't making any money, but that's what he loved. Right. By the time he comes back, the office has made some money. <laughs> okay. So that's what he lives on. So it's often like that. So you can have a, you can have a passion for something else, and then you can get money also from somewhere else. Okay. So you need to put that together because that's very very important. Your survival is very important. There's no charity here in Ghana. True. Okay. Everything you're gonna have to pay for it. Nobody's gonna give it for free. When you come to my house, I can feed you for about a week, and that's the end. That's it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and that's more than a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so uh, it's, it's always good to have some income, and then you, you can come in and, mm-hmm. and, and, do, and do things for us. What are your um, What are your thoughts on the year of return? You know, Ghana wrote out this 2019 year of return for the black Americans who are descendants of the slave trade, of the diaspora. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that initiative? Yeah, uh, personally, I, 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 don't, I don't like going back in history so much. Because when you go back in history, only, I only learn from history. Okay, because those things that happen in history, I don't want it to be a debilitating factor for me not to prosper. You understand? Because I hear people talk about reparations and, and things of that nature. I'm not, I'm not that kind of thinking. I don't have that kind of thinking. Uh, and the reason is that for, for, for me as an African, uh, at least I know enough the things that we have that we're not taking advantage of. You, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. okay. So for all the natural resources that we have that we're not taking advantage of. Okay. So I, I'm not going to blame a white man for me not taking advantage of the things that I have. You, yeah, you get my point. So, I like the history part of it. I've been to all the castles to see what happened, what another human being can do to another human being. I've, I've gone there to see. Uh, it's, it's not a pretty sight, you know, once they, they start narrating the history to you. Um, it is it's also good. It makes somebody who was not born here feels good and see history in real Real, real life. You, you understand what I mean? So once, once you get to know, you understand. You understand where you are and where you want to go. Okay. Okay. So it's good. It's good to bring everybody around. And the thing that I like is that it's, it's, it brings exposure to my country, and it also opens the minds of my people in, in diaspora. You know, my brothers in in, in the USA and everywhere else. It opens a new window to you. You understand mm-hmm. because often when you live in the states, every, everything is laid out essentially, everything is there. You only have to take advantage of the system and you'll be okay. But then when you when you travel outside and you see how the other have lived, okay, that also opens your mind. It opens your mind so that when you go back, you begin to take care of the things that you to appreciate the things that you have. On the other hand, it also opens your mind to the things that you can do elsewhere. You understand? So somebody is going to come and they're going to think, my God, they got coconut trees here. I could do something with it. You know, and decide to do business with it. Okay. We got bamboo here. Somebody can decide they can use some, some to do something else. You know, so they, if you look around the things that you can do, that is what the country is looking for. Okay. We're looking for people who can take our resources and make the country better for us. You understand? Because, um, like, for me, what I see often happen is that the, 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 the market is not open enough, or we're not opening the market enough. So, you, when you go to when you go outside, almost all the shop, everybody is selling the same, the same thing. thing, right? Okay, mm-hmm. and that is one of the things that. Bothers me. It bothers me too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it, it's very difficult for the size of our population. We need to expand. We need to bring other things to the to the to the market. You get it. And we need to also process some of the the food items. There's so much food in terms of one of the things that we, we find difficult to preserve is, is plantain and, and banana. Okay. Mm-hmm. And banana tops 
one week is one week. gone. Right. Plantain same way. You know, they're like brothers and sisters. It don't last long. So we need we need a way somebody can preserve it. We can if you can preserve it when you turn it into chips or something, you know, nice chips, package it up, put some pepper on top of it, do something spicy with it, ship it overseas. Well I give it to Walmart or someplace. You'd be making a hell of money. Um at my age I'm not thinking too too much about business, you know. You're chilling, you're retired. I'm retired. Okay. So. I take things easy. Well, what, did, what did you do in the States? Uh, I was a real, realtor. Oh, okay, real estate. Real, real, real estate, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I got out when, when the bubble burst. Oh, eight, oh, nine, oh, eight. Yeah, okay. seven. Oh, seven, seven oh, eight, yeah. Out, yeah. Before then, I was king, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just do that, do all this, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, you take advantage of it when, when it gets bad and come out. You know, because I was, I was building and, and, and selling my own properties, uh, Wow. The what what part of the state? Uh, Maryland. Maryland, okay. Yeah. So I'm not sure what else you want me to uh, last question. What tangible skills should a black American who's returning to Ghana bring to the table? Because we talked about having something to offer. Yeah, well the the, the 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 skills are, are many. Okay. But what, what do you think is needed if you what, could what we have here is we have a lot of uh, I'm not sure. No, we don't. We don't have so much of technical uh, abilities or technical uh, qualifications. Okay, and a lot of the, the 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 people that we have here are concentrated on the service sides, you know, like the banks, the the telecoms, and things like that. You know, but what we need is engineering. If you have engineering okay. in oil, oil and gas field, because that is a new thing for Ghana. We got we got oil. And there's a possibility that we're going to be striking more oil. Okay, so we're going to need the technical expertise in, the, in all the petrochemical fields. Okay, um, and what what else? You know, in areas of uh, uh, engineering, I said, and, and things that we we can use our natural resource, you know, to to refine or to change it into some other form. There are, there are so many that I can't begin to, to name them. So we need we need scientists, people who understand the soil science, for instance. Okay, that the things that we can grow and what we grow, the things that we can get out of it. For instance, uh, uh, what's the name? Corn, mm -hmm. maize. You know, in Ghana we don't make we don't we don't use we don't get oil out of it of maize. All we do is eat. Okay. But there's oil in it, okay. And I know also that you can get plastic out of corn. Okay, that's a biodegradable uh, uh, material from it. And that is what I'm saying. That the economy, we can expand the economy even with the same uh, cash crop and, and things of that nature. That we can transform it. There are many other things that you can get out of. A simple product like maize, okay, which I've seen in the, in the States, okay, but here we don't. Now, we have something called ethanol. Okay. Ethanol, we can get that from maize. But often what happens is that in maize, the competition for food, you get it, is so great, so it makes it expensive. But we have here what we call cassava. Mm -hmm. Cassava. I eat it all the time. You eat it all the time? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> but you know you can get a lot also a lot of ethanol out of it. I know that. Okay, yes, you can. Okay. And now you, you know often we are you know, usually when you buy fuel in the States, you know that they have a blend. So usually right. they say ten percent ethanol. Mm -hmm. Ghana we haven't done that yet. This is all pure fuel. It's all pure fuel. Okay. So at some point when the government begin to get it to mix our fuel, you know, so if you if you look at most of the Chevys that are coming out, you, you see flex fuel Correct. Mm -hmm. on the back. It, it means that you can use pure ethanol or a mix of ethanol and normal uh, gas. Okay? So these are the things I'm talking about. That the advantages are there. And you, you need to have you need to bring people who have the technical background so that they can begin to get into situations like this. Okay. So
so that will expand the economy, changes everything. Because right now we're not using ethanol. We're not <coughs> using ethanol for fuel. But if somebody can do that and tell the government, let's let's do a blend, and ten percent of that goes into the fuel, it's wonderful. Okay. You understand? I understand. Okay, so All right. Those are the skills. And even in, in, the, in the ICT level, right now, what what is increasingly becoming important is cyber security. Right. Because people need to protect their data. And you need you need to be good. Cyber security and, and also storage. All those areas are very good. Cyber storage or physical storage units? No, cyber storage. Okay. I mean the information that you have. Uh, like what you like the cloud. Like a cloud. Okay. Okay. But there's more of a commercial uh, form of storage, mm -hmm. which is in, is in the uh, um, the data space. You, you understand? So in, in the cyber space, such that you know, for instance, you can get all the, the documentations and everything from government and store it. Okay. So when when they call you, they give you the code. Or whatever you just type it in, voila, it brings it out, print it, stick it together, they can come for it. You know, those type of things. So there are many more things. In construction, the roads. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People, I told people the traffic here might be worse than Lagos. Oh, yeah, for that one, yes. And I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, Legos. I thought Legos was gonna be yeah. worse, but Legos, I, yeah. Ghana might have Legos. Yeah, yeah, Ghana is a, Ghana is manageable when you have the police officers around. Uh, okay, so I was telling Philip that it's yeah. I could fix the Ghanaian traffic issues yeah. myself yeah. in a day. How is that? The Chochos yeah. cause the majority of the traffic because yeah. they pull over, but they take up half the road, mm -hmm. and there's a line of them, like ten of them, mm -hmm. and. They won't. Fit, they don't move until they're completely filled up. Right. right. And how do you change that? You ticket them and find them. Yeah, that, that's that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's a major problem. Uh -huh. Okay. And the, 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 that one of the things I I, I I talked to you about earlier that the system is not properly structured. So you have usually you have police officers on the take. Right. Uh, because you've done something wrong. Otherwise, you should have ticketing system. Right. Okay, and the ticketing system here yeah. is, is so cumbersome that once you are caught, mm -hmm. they tell you to park your car and they give you a paper to go to court. Right. That, it doesn't make sense. So nobody wants you to So if I can pay my way out, I'll pay the police officer and get away with it. Oh, okay, okay, you okay, okay. So it is a systemic problem that needs to be changed. So when you're traveling on the highway and you don't have a driver license, mm -hmm. they tell you, okay, don't have to park the car. Okay. Park the car on the highway. Yeah. Park, park the car. Or take it to the nearest police station, park the car, and then go bring your driver's license. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult. Right. I know in the States, if, if you don't have a driver's license and you're able to give them your driver's license number, they can tap it in right. and make sure you know you, you got it. Mm. Oh, I'll keep a, a copy on my phone, a picture of it. Exactly. Yeah. So they, they, But here, it's, it's not like that. If you don't have a chance inside, you will not go. Mm -hmm. And the only way to go is to pay the police officer. I mean, I'm not saying it's good, mm -hmm. but the system is so convoluted that these things happen. Mm -hmm. Let me do this quickly. Okay, go ahead. And in the back, there is kind of like bedrooms or after bedrooms. And this, this place, man, look. A lot of people don't even know what's going on, man, in Ghana. They don't know. And, it, and you can make money here fast. Right. You can make money here fast. That's what people don't know either, you know? Because, like, like, people are thinking on a small scale when they come here. They're thinking on a small scale. Selling coconuts on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's why I feel like it's important for you to meet, like, different grades, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you can know what's possible. That's uh, After you learn that, and shoot, he was he was in the USA for 30 years. Came back here. Look how he's living. Right. Better than most Americans. Back and forth. He can go back and forth as he pleases. You know, that's the key.